Welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each weekday, a member of staff or a volunteer will share a work of art from the museum's permanent collection and post some questions for discussion. Please check back each weekday at 10 a.m. for a new artwork and a new discussion. My name is Alex Adi Callen, and I'm the coordinator for the Rosenthal Education Center. Today, I'd like to share a really important work in the Cincinnati Art Museum's collection, a Songye power figure, also known as an Enkishe. Let's take a look. Large-scale power figures such as this example were central to the life of Songye communities spread over a vast territory in East Central Democratic Republic of the Congo. Acting as intermediaries between ancestral spirits and the living, Nkishi were intended to benefit the entire community and were not the property of a single person. The creation of an Nkishi was a public event that brought together the community, a skilled carver, and an experienced spiritual healer known as an Nganga. Chiefs and elders commissioned the Nkishi, and the community was responsible for cutting the tree selected for the carving. Both the carver and the Nganga had to be well established in their respective professions. The Nganga decided on the Nkishi's features and type of wood to be used, and often selected the type of wood used for its curative or toxic properties, or for being associated with specific ancestral reasons. Once the carver had shaped the wooden form, the Nganga assembled the Bishimba, which is the powerful matter made of animal, plant, and mineral substances placed in or on the wooden figure. The addition of this sacred matter allowed the Nkishi to become a conduit for spiritual forces. Once completed, the Nkishi was kept in a special enclosure positioned in a highly visible location, such as the center of the village or near the chief's house. It was cared for by a guardian who also served as an interpreter for the Inkishi, whose messages were received through dreams or spiritual possession. During new moon celebrations, the Inkishi was taken out of its enclosure to be recharged by the moon's life force. It was carried in a procession through the village, but could not be touched due to its great potency. Instead, wooden poles were attached under the arms. You can see the holes under this figure's armpits where the, where the poles would have gone. This Nkishi, which has been a part of Cincinnati Art Museum's collection since 1976 and is, is an especially imposing example. Like others of its kind, it is clothed heavily in skins and hides. Its lower portion bears a leather and hair loincloth and a stitched raffia mat with leopard skin apron. This image stands in a characteristic rigid upright pose and cradles a miniature power figure tucked into the top of its loincloth. Other elements of adornment, such as the skin clothing, metal nails and spikes, and the black antelope horn headdress also adds power to the figure and enhances its protective function. I can't say for certain, but it is also very likely that there are more bishimba, or powerful medicinal materials, placed inside of the Nkishi. While this particular Nkishi is not currently on view at the museum, likely due to the fragile nature of its adornment, you can view two other Nkishi in Gallery 103. I don't know how this important spiritual vessel ended up at the Cincinnati Art Museum, but I feel very honored to have the opportunity to view and learn about such an important and significant cultural object. The question I'd like to pose today is, what's an object in your community that holds great importance and power? What gives it its significance? Please comment below. I'd also like to thank Yael Biro from the Metropolitan Museum of Art for her excellent article on the Met website that gave me much of my information about the Inkishi. Thanks and see you next time.